The chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakub, has stated that the commission has learned several lessons from the conduct of the 2019 general elections. He also added that the lessons learned will help in conducting more credible and better organized elections in the future. Now joining me once again is Mr. Martin Lomba, political analyst. Now Mr. Lomba, you were here with us during the Nigeria Decides yes the, you know week one and elections, week two yeah. you know and even after the elections on yes. the election day yes. we were the first blooper or for want of a better word first mistake that INEC made was to shift the elections mm. a few hours mm. to the elections mm. which seriously outraged Nigerians yes and you know Nigerians were divided into two. There were people who said, oh, well, we didn't expect so much from INEC. I mean, come on, it has happened before, you know. Mm. And there were people who said, we hoped and trusted that INEC, this INEC would work better. Mm. So I'm wondering, in all of these things that INEC is saying they've learned their lessons, every other election cycle, we hear Ida I Morris, you or Professor Jaga, whoever it is who sits there, say, oh, we've learned from this election. We're going to possibly do better in this election, but we always see the same thing happen all over again. Detail mm. for election malpractice, give it whatever name, ballot box snatching. Mm. Now we pay monies for votes, okay, vote, vote buying. Buy. They come structure. in different names, but mm. it's the same thing mm. every four years. So should we be taking this statement from INEC with a pinch of salt? As a matter of fact, the statement by the INEC chairman, as far as I'm concerned, was empty because he, he didn't really say what lessons have been learned. He didn't disclose anything. He just said that we have learned several lessons. He didn't say that, okay, we have learned lessons about logistics, we've learned lessons about security, we've learned lessons about what have you. Mm -hmm. He didn't say anything. It mm -hmm. was just empty. It was a bogus statement. And uh, I would have expected the media people to have taken taking him on right there at the briefing. But be that as it may, I will take uh, this statement as empty as it is with uh, a bowl of salt, you know, not just a, a pinch of salt. Yes, a bowl of salt. And the reason is because um, so far, most of his public statements have been quite disappointing to a large extent since after the results of the elections. And by that I mean that um, you, you find where people are saying we have these issues with the elections and he's not able to come out precisely to say, okay, this is exactly what we're going to do. This is how we're going to tackle but it. But he has come not out. You it. sound pretty pe pessimistic because he has come out to say after the general elections of 2019, we are more determined than mm. ever to improve on the quality of the elections. Mm, determined is that, how? Is that not uh, good it, enough? A let, me, let me give you an example. Um, before the elections, I, I, I recall that uh, Mikey Guinea, the uh, resident electoral commissioner for Aquaibom, I want to believe, mm -hmm. he said something about uh, transmission of results. It said something about SAVA. And now there is some dispute and SAVA has been mentioned. And the INEC chairman comes to say that, or rather the commission comes to say that they don't have a SAVA. I mean, what is that? And well, there, they was budget, that was for a there was a budget run. for the server. You know, well, not necessarily. Like They're that. saying that mm. it was supposed to be test run, and then it, there was no approval for servers in this okay, election. Okay, fine. Now, let me tell you how we know that that is uh, far from the truth. If you say that it was supposed to be test run, and one party says we want to have access to it, why are you denying them that access? But they're saying it wasn't eventually used during the election, We're still saying according the same to INEC. We're still saying the same thing. If this thing was not used and we want to see it, how is that a problem? How well, is that going to disturb They you? told the court mm. in a prayer that you cannot be asking to access something that is not even available. So it's not there in the first instance. My According dear. to INEC. But let's move on from the yes. server issue. So let's about about this, they are learning lessons. Have they learned lessons from the security concerns that we had? I know that uh, Chief E.K. Clark, you know, an elder statesman, he had said that with the way our elections are going, it is better for INEC itself 
to handle security. By that I mean requests for certain maybe multi uh, multinational joint task force or team, and then you now do your allocation of you know responsibilities, and you say that this group will report to this person and all of that within the commission. That is a suggestion. So from what we observed, you understand, instead of the security agencies taking their briefings, their directives from their command centers, it would have been better for them to take all of the directives from INEC. That is a good suggestion because the security concerns were relatively very, very annoying. But that would also be a bridge of sorts, you know, how? in the chain of command. We know how it works no, in this no, country. No, 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 no. The NYSC has a DG. The DG is an army man. How is that a breach? There is no breach there. Societies are built, are you with me, solidly based on agreements. If we say that this is how we're going to do it, a referee in the field, he just has a whistle in his mouth, and the whole stadium obeys him because we have said, this is the man we have handed over to. If we say we have given the control to the INEC, to the commission, I bet you all of the officers that they sent to that place, they will not look at anybody's face. They know that the chain of command stops with maybe the INEC chairman But then or something. again, let's flip the coin. Let's yes. not also forget that there have been people fingered in within INEC yes. who have somewhat been accused of conspiracy. tampering or conspiracy. So again, if you say that this is who they're going to be reporting to, Who's to say that there will also not be tampering let me, with let me tell security you. The, agencies? The and don't forget, security agents have also been caught on camera taking bribes. We're still saying at the same thing. election. So we're trying to improve the system. INEC says they have learned lessons, and we're saying that some of the lessons that we would so have how does taking orders to, from INEC even solve the situation? No, that, it does. It system? does because there is a standard. I want to assure you that nobody can conveniently drive a car with three tires. It's not possible. So if the standard is that with four tires you can move, if we put that standard there, any joker that comes with three tires, he can't go anywhere. And we will see him precisely for what he has done. You okay. understand? Let's look at the EU. If there is a breach, it will be obvious. Let's look at the EU observation team's recommendations to INEC. This, let's mm. do a throwback to that because if INEC is saying that they, they, they're willing to improve and they learn mm. lessons, let's quickly go back to some of those things they pointed out. Now, the um, INEC's response to the EU's recommendation yeah. was that, and I quote, Implementation of EU recommendations will strengthen our electoral process. So okay. we could assume that maybe uh, this maybe is all those issues about underage voting they will take care now, of. Now the the mission, the EU mission, yes. first and foremost, concluded that the systematic failings seen in the elections and the relatively low levels of voter participation mm. show the need for fundamental electoral reforms. And if we're talking about electoral reforms, where do we start uh, start from? Do we start from the bill that is on Mr. President's table that he's yet to sign? That's a good place to start. That's a very good place to start. I'm even surprised that nobody has taken up this issue legally. Do you understand? Do you know that even as a commander-in-chief, you can be guilty of sabotaging the welfare of your citizens? Understand what I'm saying? But he has immunity. See, see, it doesn't matter. When you interrogate an issue, the shame that will come with it, the embarrassment that will come with it. Some of these things actually force leaders to resign. This is what we're saying. So when you take matters like this to court, we brought the first bill, you rejected, we brought the second, we brought the third, you kept on rejecting. Somebody ought to take this thing to court and say precisely the damage that this thing has caused. Do you understand? People died these 2019 elections. They cannot die in vain. They should not die in vain. And that is precisely the, the, the mistake we, we keep on doing in this, in this country. We okay. keep on making in this country. It, it is really, really, how will I put it? It is really, really provocative that we see these things and nobody can do anything about it. If I had the local standing, for instance, or even the resources, I tell you I will not wait one second. Well, you're doing something by speaking with us. Uh, another recommendation what? by the EU observation team was that 
electoral tribunals cover pre-election cases in order to improve access to remedy and avoid petitions being taken to different courts at the same time. And we saw a lot of that happen. Yeah, it was which one of the reasons... Which also cost uh, both parties. It was one of the reasons they claimed that uh, the June 12 elections were annulled. That all this idea of cases all over the place, plethora of cases on the same matter. I mean, it's but we not see tidy. this happen every election cycle. Yeah, and fact, that is because I think we've had the highest in 2019. It's yes, such and a that mess. is because they have not streamlined the rules. Understand what I'm saying? If there are a hundred parties, for instance, and we say that if you score one senatorial seat, it means that the next sequence of events. We're going to limit you to maybe National Assembly elections. Or if you uh, are able to score, uh, maybe uh, win a, a councillorship seat, uh, we limit you to local government. When you put standards, are you with me? You tidy up the, the bulk. But when you, you just say everything is anyhow, for instance, if you say that all cases will not take beyond 30 days, that is an improvement, for instance. And again, if you say that all cases, once a case has been taken to a primary court, it must not be replicated anywhere else. Even mm -hmm. if they are of, uh, uh, what they call it, uh, uh, that is in legal palace, meaning that they are of horizontal coordinates. Mm -hmm. That is, they are in the same uh, uh, level, category. category, that kind of thing. It doesn't really matter. If you put the rules, are you with me? Mm -hmm. Once the rules are there, that is why we have rules. And that is why even in a football team, you have a, a football team captain. So if we put the rules, even if there are 1,000 cases, if we say, okay, all of them will be streamlined to just one case, it will be done. Like I said, the last time um, this conversation Sorry, came I, up... Sorry, I see myself shouting. I don't know why. I'm not I, supposed to shout. I can, I I can imagine. Shouting, yes. for, for example, the, uh, when we were talking about the EU recommendations, the week it came out, Yes. I, for me, I thought that they were very elementary. These are things that you don't need an outsider to tell very you. Very true. But if an outsider is telling us, then it means there's a problem. So I ask, and I'm asking you to, mm. why has it taken us so long to realize that we have a problem and that we need to fix it. And, we, and it's not just INEX problem. It is a Nigerian problem, which Let involves me. the voter, the security agencies, the presidency. It involves the National Assembly and everybody else, including the judiciary, which is bombarded with all kinds of cases. And we get this judgment the, today, the, and then one the governor simple, is installed and another is taken the out. The simple reason, the simple reason is that because of the motive, they actually have an agenda. Who's they? When I say they, the politicians. But most of the times, the incumbents have the upper hand. So if the incumbent, if the leader actually wants to set an example, we will get it right. Usually, once something... Are you insinuating that the president does not want to change things, hence the reason why things are not changed? Well, that is not what I have said. But so you if said. you read between the lines, I'm sure that that is what the translation will come to. So you're admitting that we I'm have a president admitting. who has I'm refused not admitting. I, I told to you something earlier. Listen, I told or you something we earlier. We have a, a, Listen, a ruling party that has refused to change I things. Can, I can guarantee you that once something is untidy, you can manipulate it any way you want. But if there is consistency in a thing, which is why we have what you call standards, which is why you have what we call specifications. If the specification for your hair, for instance, is maybe long hair, and you use short hair, it will be obvious that you have done the wrong thing. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And again, if we say that this condiment is what will bring us pepper soup, and you go and bring what will give us onubu soup, there, there are different things. So that is precisely what, where the problem is. Because the day have an agenda to benefit where ordinarily they wouldn't have benefited. For instance, if only 10 well, people politics, up, they, they say, is a game of interest and not just numbers. Okay. You know? Everybody who's involved in politics has interest, but 
are you saying that there is no political will, even for a government that has said they are bringing us change and they have zero tolerance for corruption? Are you insinuating the, that the, they have no political will to change the to way things your are? Your question is blowing in the wind. I'm sure that we are well, it's all a yes witnesses. Or no question. We are all it's a yes or no question. Are you saying they have no political will? What categorically, they are not interested in reforming the system. Categorically, I'm saying. I can face any panel any day, and I can give instances. Just give me one reason why you think that they are not interested in changing anything. Just one. Okay. One reason. Um, the military being deployed. By that I mean soldiers being deployed. But it, that happened under the Jonathan really, administration. I'm not looking at what happened under Jonathan administration. We're looking at the reforms. INEX says they have learned lessons. So that is where we are supposed to take it from. So to that extent, I think that is a misnomer for soldiers to be deployed, you know, in, a, in an, an internal affairs thing, not to talk of a, a democratic process. I think it's a misnomer. Going forward, do you think that something will change in the next uh, again, cycle? Again, 2023 sorry, is just around again, the corner. again, before I forget, the whole idea, the whole idea of learned our lessons, you know that before the elections, there was this issue of... Uh, somebody related to the president. And again, the issue of the president and the INEC chairman coming from the same side of the country. In their reforms, if this president is going to conduct the next election, so to say, they need to do something about 